Hi, and welcome back to Build Your Own Data Logger, the virtual course run by Freak Labs and Wild Labs. This is Module 3, Submodule 3, Measuring Battery Status. In Module 3-2, we learned how to sense temperature and humidity using the DHT11 sensor. In this lab, we're going to learn more about how analog to digital converters work and how we can use it to monitor our battery status. It'll be important for us to monitor the battery voltage because it'll let us know how quickly our battery is draining and what our battery life in the field is. But first, let's talk a bit about analog to digital converters. An analog to digital converter is a bridge between the physical world and computing world. It allows us to quantify physical properties and turn them into data that we can then process. Here we're measuring temperature. The physical property of temperature gets converted to a voltage via a sensing device. There are multiple ways this can happen and many types of temperature sensors as we learned in the last submodule. Once the physical property is a voltage, it goes to the analog to digital converter, which is available on special pins on sensor ports 0 and 1 on the wild logger board. From there, it gets converted to a number, or sample, which represents the voltage. We can now do computations, analyses, and visualizations on this sample or the complete set of samples we take. In the second visual, we measure the physical property of weight. To do this, we use a sensor called a load cell that produces a voltage as it gets compressed or stretched. We can measure this voltage through the analog to digital converter and capture a sample of the weight of an object. This is quite useful if you want to weigh an object, an animal, or even use weight as a way to trigger a camera trap. Say we have a table that we really like and we want to recreate it in a CAD tool like SketchUp. How would we do that? One way to do that is to take a ruler and measure the distance from some reference point at a fixed interval, like say every one centimeter. Every time you take a measurement, you're taking a sample at that point or location. To cover the whole table, you sample at a fixed sampling interval. When you're done, you've converted the shape of the table into a series of numbers. You can then take those numbers or measurements and recreate the table's shape in SketchUp, where you can then use all the power of the tool to do things like change the legs, cut it in half, test out different paint colors, etc. So to illustrate this point, let's draw a representation of the table, like so. The next thing we need to do is set a reference point that we're going to measure from. So say we set the bottom edge of the table as our reference point, and that's where that's our zero point, and we're going to measure the table's profile from that point. So I'm just going to draw some axes to make things easier. These are my x axes and y axes, and these are in centimeters. And then I'm going to draw out my, uh, my sampling points, which will be at 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters, etc. Once we have that, then what we do is we use our ruler and we measure the distance from the reference point to the tip of the profile of the table and we do that at each of our sampling points. And once we have those numbers, then what we can do is we can recreate the profile of the table inside our CAD tool, like SketchUp. Analog to digital converters work in exactly the same way. But instead of measuring position, like Y versus X in centimeters, what we're measuring is voltage versus time, as we'll see shortly. Analog to digital conversion is pretty much the same principle. What we try to do is take a physical property, like for example, sound, and somehow convert it to a voltage. Once it's converted to a voltage, the analog to digital converter is similar to our ruler. It will give us a numerical value that represents the voltage. Once we have our physical property represented as numerical values, we can start employing extremely powerful tools to process and visualize this information. These are tools like statistical analysis, machine learning, and of course, many different types of visualizations. The principle works something like this. Say we have an audio sine wave and we want to represent it digitally. The first thing we need is some type of sensor that converts the sound to a voltage, like a microphone. A microphone works similarly to a speaker. In a speaker, voltage waves drive a speaker coil to move back and forth, creating sound waves. In a microphone, sound waves drive a voice coil back and forth, creating voltage waves. This converts the sound to a voltage that's changing with time and looks like this sine wave. In order to represent it, we have to figure out how often we take a measurement of the voltage. This is called our sampling frequency. For example, if it's a 1 kilohertz sine wave, then perhaps we're sampling it at a frequency of 10 kilohertz, meaning we take a sample every 100 microseconds. 
Standard audio sampling frequencies are actually like 44.1 kilohertz. So how does the analog to digital conversion work? Assume, for example, that our audio sine wave has gone through a microphone and produced a voltage sine wave. Now the task is to convert this into a numerical representation of the wave. One way to do this is to run it through the simplest analog to digital converter, which would be a 1-bit ADC. This simply means we divide our voltage range in half, and any sample above our threshold voltage gets a value of 1, and any below gets a value of 0. It's very low resolution, but a digital reproduction would give us a hint of the original analog sine wave. For a 1-bit ADC, it'll have 2 to the 1 number of levels, or 2 levels. This means it can assume a value of 0 or 1. 1 bit ADCs actually exist and they're called comparators. What they do is they compare a voltage and if it's above a threshold voltage it outputs a 1 and if it's below a threshold voltage it outputs a 0. Now let's take a look at a 2 bit ADC. A 2 bit ADC means it'll have 2 to the power of 2 levels or 4 quantization levels. So we divide up our voltage range into four equal parts. That means the output can assume a value from 0 to 3. After sampling, if we digitally reproduce our waveform, it starts looking a bit more similar to our original sine wave. Now that we've gone through how an analog to digital converter works, this brings us to the wild logger. The wild logger has a 10-bit ADC, and if you remember, that means it has 2 to the 10 quantization levels, or it divides the voltage range, 3.3 volts, up into 1024 equal levels. Put another way, each unit of ADC value is equivalent to 3.3 millivolts, which is the minimum voltage the wild logger's built-in ADC can resolve. There are two sensor ports on the wild logger, and they correspond to analog pins A0 and A1. This means that, along with being able to handle a digital sensor, like the DHT11, it can also handle sensors that output analog values. I put together a little demonstration of the wild logger ADC in action. I've used a variable resistor, or a potentiometer, which can output a varying voltage depending on the position of the knob. In this demonstration, I've connected the output of the potentiometer to sensor port 0 on the wild logger. I've also written a simple program to read the raw ADC value and then convert it to a voltage. You can also see a visual representation of the voltage on the oscilloscope as well as the voltage the scope reads. First, I'm going to take the voltage to half the voltage range of the ADC. This is half of 3.3 volts or 1.65 volts. You can see the value is pretty close to 512, which is half of 1024, the max value of the ADC. Next, we take it all the way up to 3.3 volts, which is the max value of the ADC. It reads 1023, which is 2 to the 10 minus 1, or the max value of the 10-bit ADC. Next, let's take it down to some arbitrary value, value like 0.5 volts. You can see there's good correlation between our ADC and the scope. And finally, we take it back down to zero. In this submodule, we learned about how the analog to digital converter works. In the next submodule, we'll be doing our first ADC lab. Stay tuned for module 3, lab 3A, checking the battery status.